So after 205 days in space, I learned a lot of things, but I think the most important thing is just the perspective that you gain. One of the common themes that you hear from almost all astronauts and cosmonauts is this feeling, this desire, this need to protect our planet because you realize how special it is, how beautiful it is, and how fragile it is. So with a spacewalk being the most challenging thing that we do, the riskiest thing that we do, we are 100% concentrating on that task at hand. And so there really wasn't any time where I couldn't even really allow myself to start thinking about anything more philosophical or a little bit deeper about the significance of the first all-female spacewalk. After the spacewalk, I think I had more time to process the significance of it. First of all, it was just how many people paid attention. I was actually quite shocked because most people don't really pay attention to spacewalks or watch spacewalks these days. But for whatever reason it was, this one was being watched by people all over the world. People of all ages and from all different backgrounds. Something I think really just captured that enthusiasm and that inspiration. Here on the ground, of course, it's three-dimensional, but you're really not even using your whole three-dimensional space. You know, we're using the floor, we're using the tables, we're putting things down. We don't really use this ceiling area or the walls, for that matter, in terms of a useful space of what you interact with on a regular basis. But when we're in space, we're actually using the entire three-dimensional volumetric space. And so what that does for your brain to interpret that spatial orientation and navigation, it's totally different. And I think what I hadn't really thought about before on the ground is that when we navigate on the ground, our sense of direction and our spatial awareness, everything is relative to gravity. And if you take that away, suddenly your brain doesn't know what to do. So you would be here on the space station. Of course, now we're using all of this 3D volumetric space. And if I'm down here working on the deck, what's the equivalent of the floor? And then suddenly I would jump up to the ceiling to get something else. I would actually feel my brain do this sort of flip flop after a couple weeks, you could feel that go away. And so you start using these other, other cues, I think these other physical cues to navigate instead of that, that reference system that we have that's based on gravity. And that was just something that I had never really thought about until I experienced it myself. The first thing that I would say to any student who's interested in pursuing a career in the space sector, for whatever that means, whether it's to be an astronaut one day or to be an engineer, or a rocket designer or a small satellite designer or a space scientist. I think the first thing is most importantly to, to make sure that what you're doing is the thing that you're the most passionate about. So I think if you can find that passion, you know, then it all starts in the STEM fields and that's something that of course is so important and is so encouraged now all over the world, science, technology, engineering, math, and getting that sort of fundamental background which then can propel you really in any of those directions. And realizing that it's okay, it's necessary to take a risk, uh, that's really, I believe, the, the only way to get that reward. You know, I think if we don't encounter those bumps in the road, those obstacles, those hardships, then those are the things that really get you there in the end. Those are the things that you truly learn from. And of course, I've had those moments, every astronaut has had those moments. So to me, there are three main reasons for returning to the moon. And the first one is just simply exploration. You know, I truly believe this is just part of us as humans. It is an innate characteristic that we are all born with. If we didn't have that, we would have never even finished exploring and discovering all of the different continents on this planet, for example. And the second one is really the good for all, and that is for science. So for example, if you look at the Apollo program, the geological samples that we brought back from the moon, we are still learning new things from those samples every day. And I think thirdly, that is for all of these other unanticipated outcomes. So again, if you use the Apollo program as an example, there, were, was, there was such a huge amount of resources that were poured into the Apollo program where we were stimulating all of this growth in all of the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, math. There were so many people that became interested in these fields, started studying these fields, and that has paid dividends for the many decades that have passed since then. 